looked at roots of multiplicity, right? Roots of multiplicity. Now, the whole point was, if we combine what we know about calculus and the roots of a polynomial, right, that can bring a, a large problem down to size, okay? So we took advantage of the fact that you're like, oh, if I've got a double root, that means I know something about stationary points and so on. So multiplicity of roots and calculus are one tool that you can use to sort of, well, yeah, take a problem that is insoluble and just sort of simplify it down a little bit. Okay. Now, in just the same way as in trigonometry, identities can also be used in polynomials. So here is an example. If we have a look at this disaster, okay, um, if the first thing I asked you to do was, hey, can you, um, you like factorize or, or find the roots of this kind of thing? You would rightly look at that and think, really? Now, as, uh, as you'll discover in a minute, this is actually not too difficult. This can be done through some judicious use of the factor theorem, okay? Yes, in fact, there are some very obvious roots because we, we're not trying to make it difficult for you. But, but, what I'm going to show you is how identities can take this problem. It's still, it's still long to do through factor theorem and just break it down to size, okay? So this is actually just the first half of the question. The second half is, express this as a quadratic in this polynomial, and hence find its zeros, right? And hence find its zeros. And yes, I put an extra e in my zeros. Now, how do we how do we do this? Okay, firstly, have a look. Like we're gonna interpret what is the question asking? Okay, when we say oh a quadratic in x, we mean it's got an x squared and a, a single a linear x term and a constant term, right? If I say a quadratic in sine, what we would mean is something like this: you know, sine squared x plus. Uh, well, I'll use my favorite quadratic, but the problem is that, is that it has no solutions in this case. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to say that's a quadratic in sine, okay? Because I've got my sine squared term, I've got my linear sine term, if such a thing exists, and I've got my constant term. So a quadratic in this means I'll have this squared plus a linear amount of that plus a constant. And that'll be my identity for how to write P of X. Okay? So here's the way I'm going to begin. What is a quadratic in that? Let's just state it, okay? Uh, I, what I want is that p of x is exactly equal to, for all values of x, that's what the three equal signs mean, or the three equal signs. Uh, my quadratic in this. So every quadratic is in the form a whatever squared plus b times whatever plus c. That's a general quadratic in x squared plus kx. Okay? And the reason why this works is because if you take this term here, you're going to get your power of 4 out of that. Okay. So this is, this is going to work out. Okay. When I have a look at this, immediately there are some things I can do to make this easier. right? Because I want this quadratic, but I've got all of these unknowns in here. I've got four of them. right? A, B, C, and K. I don't know what any of them are. Okay. So what's the easiest one to have a look at? Anything? Yeah. Expand. OK, I could expand before I expand. I think there are two of the pronoun rules that are very easy to see. Jinsu, do you want to take from now? Okay, so if I sub in x is equal to zero, that's going to give me a constant term, is it not? Right. And you can see here, all of these zeros, all these zeros, all these zeros, aha, there it is. Right. So right off the bat, I can say, by comparison of coefficients, because the original quartic and this new identity that I've introduced, they should be exactly the same. I'm simply going to say um, c equals negative 8. I get that from comparing the constant terms. Okay, That's good. That's easy. Are there any other of the pronumerals that I can find really easily? Sum and product. Okay. okay. You've got so many great methods that we're going to use, but I think we can get easier ones first. Eddie? Uh, a equals to 1. I think the leading coefficient, right? Because the leading coefficient is here. The great thing about the leading one, the one, the reason why we keep on going after it, 
is because there's only one way out of any expansion to get the leading coefficient, right? Like say the x cubed term, it's gonna like be some dumb mess in here. The x squared term, it's gonna have some of this, and it's also gonna have that guy as well. So they'll be intertwined. So I'll get to them, but I might as well get the ones where there's only one way you're gonna get an x to the four out of this. It only comes from there. Do you agree? So therefore I can say, oops, it isn't. I can say a is equal to one. Okay, it's pretty good, right? Now it starts to get a little more involved. Where would you go next? What do you reckon? What's your next sort of direction to go in? Let me write out what we know so far, right? Just to, to keep you in the right headspace. I've got this at the moment. Okay, so you have a look at this, right? Clearly I'm going to now, now I don't really have much choice. I need to do some expansion. Do you agree with that? I've, I've got to expand something, okay? And then I can actually compare some proper coefficients because at the moment it's all tangled up in there, okay? So we better expand this thing out. Should we do that together? Just, I haven't done any collection of like terms. I have simply taken this guy and expanded it. Do you see it's the first three terms? Do you see it? There it is there, right? I've taken this guy and expanded it, the next two, next two terms, and then you've got the minus eight hanging on the end. Okay. okay, now we took care of the constants. We took care of the, um, the x to the four term. Okay, now you have a look. Have a look. What else is easy? Think about easy targets here. There's only one x cubed term. Do you see it? There he is, right there. No other x cubed terms. And so that x cubed term, and this x cubed term, they must be analogous to each other, right? So again, my comparison of coefficients, I can say, uh, therefore, 2k equals negative 6. Do you agree with that? You see where I got it from? So there's my value of k. That's good. I've got an a, a c, a k. What's left? This is this guy over here, right? So if I factor out my... Which way shall I take it? Should I get it from here or should I get it from here? What do you think? Start one because you know you can. Clearly it's easy to go with this guy, right? Do you see why? Like, I mean, I could get it out of either. But look, do I want to pick two terms or one? Like, this makes a super easy comparison, right? So I'm even going to sneak it in here because it'll be so quick. BKX is exactly equivalent to... Six. Six. Right? And in fact, I already know what k is, right? So I'm going to write that as minus 3b equals 6. six. So b is equal to negative 2. Okay? Now, just think about what we did there for a second, right? We went through that and we went through it in a kind of unusual order, almost a random order. But it wasn't random at all, right? We were trying to go for low hanging fruit, right? If you go up to say b first, you'll still get it. It will just take you four or five more lines because you know less about it. Does that make sense? So you go for things that's like, wow, that's just standing right there. And I can just read it off. Yeah. All right. Yes. If it's not monic, then you're going to have to go through a little more detail in solving simultaneously. Oh. You can see I have no simultaneous equations here, and that's because of the simplicity of the equation. Okay, shh, 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 shh. Now, why was I finding um, A, B, C, and K? What was the point? To Yeah, so that I can express this thing as a quadratic, right? So therefore, I can say P of X is exactly equal to... Now, keep in mind, I actually know what k is, don't I? It's negative 3, so I'm going to write it like that. I don't need to write plus kx anymore. That thing's being squared. Then I've got, what have I got? Minus 2, is that right? Yes. Minus 2, lots of that guy. And then I've got minus 8 hanging off on the end. Okay. Now at this point, again, I have a bit of a choice. Don't write this down, because I don't think you'll need to. But when you see this, like in, like, Year 10, when we saw quadratic identities, because that's kind of what this is, an equation reducible to a quadratic, okay? I would say, well, you better substitute, right? So I'd say, let u equal x squared minus 3x, and then you get this guy, right? Do you agree with that? I've just done a straight substitution. And then you look at this, and the whole point of writing it like this is just to make the factorization more obvious. What is the factorization? Minus 4 plus, minus four plus 2. Yeah, do you agree with that? 
that's fine. Okay. However, there's no reason why. Just like in chain rule, you start off doing let u equals this, and then you, you start working with that, and you introduce the chain rule formally. But there's no reason we have to do that. Once you're comfortable with chain rule, you just start doing chain rule straight away. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I know what u is. It's not mysterious to me, right? So I'm going to go straight to this step, but I'm just going to replace u with the actual function, right? There is u minus 4, and there is u plus 2. Okay? And you can see what looked very intimidating for the beginning now is quite trivial, right? There's a pair of quadratics here, and they are both very easy to factorize. What's the first pair? It's minus 4, x plus 1. And the next x one looks like x minus 1. X minus. X minus 2? Yeah. Done. Nice and simple. Okay? In fact, you'd be hard pressed to find any nicer numbers than that. I haven't quite answered the question, have I? Um, yeah. Was so hairs right the way? Heads find is zero. Yeah, heads find is zero. Not to be confused with solving, there's nothing to solve here, right? Like this thing is not equal to anything, it's just a polynomial. But I can find the values that make it zero, and that I can solve, okay? Therefore, the zeros are, let's do them in order, shall we? Uh, negative one, one, two, and four. There you go. Okay. So, just review for a second, what did we do? We need to know what it meant to say a quadratic in that. Okay? And you're going to encounter this quite a lot, that you're just dealing with higher powers. So you get quadratics in x cubed, x whatever. Okay? Once you put it down, this is a very familiar kind of problem. The hardest thing here is just being efficient about it. Like there's a very minimal amount of actual work to you if you know what order to go through it. And then bring it to your factorization. For that x squared plus kx, that thing, it's given, or do you need to make it? Okay, so the answer is both yes and no, right? So you'll notice, for example, in earlier questions, you would get given an actual number in place of k. You can see here, there's, there's an actual k that can be found, right? It must be a certain value. In some ways, we therefore had to find it, okay? But you will certainly be given something in which to reform it. Like they won't just say, Make it a quadratic in anything, they will give you a bit of a nudge. Because at the moment, we don't have the analytical tools to be quite that meant to find out what it is. Okay? Good question. Yes? Um, could you kind of just go on x? You know how from the original, could we just have just added x squared and minus x squared off, and you would have gotten two. You similar. mean in here? Yeah. So, yep. you add, so you get x to power yes. 12, and then you, you have two of them, and you can collect the like terms. Is this what you're saying? Uh, Wait, no. no. Uh, plus 8x squared minus oh, x squared. And then you would have a negative of the original. So you have x squared minus 1 yeah. squared a bracket squared. of x squared minus 6x. That would work too. Yep. Would um, that be expressing it as a quadratic? If you got to this point, then yes. Oh. If you got to this point. That's a quadratic in the form x squared plus kx to the etc. Um, it's a bit of a roundabout way of doing it, but you'd get there. You'd get there. This, this is an important line though. I don't know if, <coughs> excuse me, if doing that would actually land you straight here. You have to be careful. Yeah. And this is not this. Yeah. It's something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, 